Greetings, life forms, wherever you're receiving us. This is Justin. And Matt. And I want a liter of cola. My name is Landon Down. You nice. want, wait a minute. I, is this a reference I should know? A liter of cola? A liter of oh, cola? Yes. Is this from... Oh, is this goodness. clerk? Do you not know what liter means? Liter is French for give me my f***ing cola. <laughs> Shout out to Super Troopers <laughs> too. now in theaters. Nice. <laughs> Sorry. Welcome to America. <laughs> Yeah, Super Troopers the 2 on the movie. <laughs> officially out tomorrow. That's true. How did I let that well, one fly over my head? Yeah, by the time y'all are hearing it, it should be out in theaters. And I encourage you to go do so so it doesn't take them, you know, another uh, 17 years to make another Super Troopers movie. <laughs> That's true. Go out, support it, help them make all the money. This was a, they kickstarted it, right? For this one? It was yeah, yeah. They, uh, it started with a Kickstarter uh, campaign, and I think they got like $2 million in their first days. They're like, okay, we're definitely making this movie. <laughs> I feel like you could make a pretty good Super Troopers movie on $2 million. Where are they mm-hmm. spending all that money? I mean, I know, I know we say this about a lot of the movies when we see this kind of budget, but a Super Troopers movie? Where does that money go? To must- uh, is it a mustache drugs. budget? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I was going to say probably, uh, probably whiskey and, uh, and weed. Oh, well, that's true. I didn't know if it, maybe they needed a lot of product for the mustaches or something. but I yeah. hadn't thought of that. I mean, all their must, uh, mustache games are very strong. That's true. It is April the 19th, and that's why we're talking 420. And this is episode number 84 of Nerd News Cafe. Welcome back. Welcome back into the man cave. I was going to say welcome back to Mom's Basement, wherever you might be listening to us. <laughs> Jeez. We uh, prefer the term bonus room. Sw- some sweaty, swamp-ass basement. <laughs> That's what you're like. Let's <laughs> be honest. Ass. It's just swamp-ass. Just swamp-ass <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Before we get into the headlines, of course, we're going to go around, see what everybody brought to the virtual table to drink tonight. And we're going to start today with Matt. So, Matt, what are you drinking? I'm drinking All-American Yingling. Of course. Yeah. Nice. All right. Sick of, sick of the American name. <laughs> Snap into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Landon, R-I-P. <laughs> too soon. Landon, what have it you is. got going on over there? Uh, I have somehow come into possession of something called a Devil's Harvest Breakfast IPA <laughs> from Southern <laughs> Prohibition Brewing. So uh, let's see how this goes. You Did know, they make a bigger can for the longer title? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to that. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's <laughs> fun. It just exploded on me. Neat. <laughs> now it's a party. <laughs> Sound very foamy. Uh, it was very foamy, and now I'm very foamy, but it's pretty good. Okay. And, and and it is appropriate. It's a breakfast IPA because I didn't get around to eating breakfast this morning. So, you know. Well, there you go. Catch up and on I, the meals you missed. Yep, and I hear it's the most important drink of the day. So, It is. It is. And you always want to start out your day with a devil's harvest. I mean, Absolutely. <laughs> I've always heard that is the, the best way to kick off a champion's day. I mean, that's a common phrase. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad you're enjoying that. And the color is is very pleasant. It's a pleasant it pour into a color. Okay. I would imagine it's kind of like a goldish color. It is goldish, but now I'm seeing something settle to the bottom of my glass. Oh, that's the breakfast piece. You got to chew on that. Like it's the, that's, it's it's oatmeal. Yeah, that's like bacon and egg or something <laughs> down there. Oh boy, uh, this really might be from the devil because there <laughs> is uh, questionable things in my beer. Maybe it's sea monkeys. Oh, it's just like that episode of South Park. <laughs> there you go. That didn't take me long to uh, to tie our show into another cartoon that I watch. <laughs> nice. I always love it if we can tie it back to cartoons. Mm-hmm. But uh, but to quote Farva uh, after he asked Ramathorn if that looks like uh, spit in his burger, ah, f- it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Truly. <sighs> well, I have a bit of a, a roulette on my table here, and... Uh, Basically, we were going through the the beer aisle at the grocery store last weekend, and we came across a limited edition set of four mini Strongbow cans. And um, Strongbow, are you familiar with Strongbow, gentlemen? Love Strongbow. Okay. Cider. Uh, hard Patrick apple Stewart? Cider. This is <laughs> hard apple Sir Patrick cider. Stewart? No, sir. Uh-huh. Although he might enjoy it. I don't know. So th- there's four different varieties in this pack, and they're, the, each one is 5.1 fluid ounces, so not enough to really call a beverage. So I've got four of them. But that'll, that'll uh, <laughs> definitely equal a beverage after you drink all four of them. To make it exciting and interesting, I brought a four-sided die, and this is going to determine which one I drink. So 
We're going to go around the table. So the first one, number this will be number one on the die, is Rose Apple. Number one on the die, but number one in your heart. Yeah. Number two is Gold Apple. Number, okay. th- number three is Cherry Blossom. And okay. four... And I'm just noticing they're all different uh, alcohol by volume content. Uh, four is an artisanal blend. So that's well, the that fancy. sounds fancy. So that's the fancy one, and it looks like it's actually the highest alcohol content. It's five or it's six percent. The the rose apple and gold apple are five, and then the cherry blossom is a four point five. So that's for the ladies. Uh, <laughs> a drink for the ladies. That's right, ladies. All right, here we go. I hope we can hear this roll. Probably not really well. We heard it. I yeah, got I heard I, it. I got a three. Which did I say that was the cherry blossom or artisanal? Yes, <laughs> cherry blossom because artisanal is last. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. so we'll go cherry blossom. I only remember the sexist remark you made, so I'm glad somebody was paying attention. And now, oh my goodness, it has quite a floral bouquet as I open it up. <laughs> He's drinking liquid flowers, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Hey, if it gets you drunk, it gets you drunk. I mean, Very I ain't gonna fault him. It is kind of flowery. It's pretty good. It's it's um, it's fruity. It's a, it's a fruit, but it is apple cider. So it burns the throat. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. We'll get through it. <laughs> um, That's the spirit. Yeah. I say we get into the headlines while we choke down our beverages. <laughs> 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 um. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to join us as we go through the highlights of the week in nerd culture, you can do so on our Twitter account. Just follow us at nerd underscore news underscore cafe, and you will see all the things that we like, that we retweet, that we comment about through the week. And um, take your finger for a scroll as you visit our many exciting topics that we may or may not cover on the show because we always run out of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, actually correct. But we're going to kick off this week with something that I think is pretty cool. I know we're all going to be excited to get in on this. So this is a ScreenRant.com article uh, from the 13th, which was last Friday. Happy Friday the 13th. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, did we all survive? We all made it, at least, you know. Obviously. At least we did at this table. Um, did I get killed? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, we what thought were you, you doing? Did. We thought you <laughs> did, but at the last minute, you came back at the end and saved everybody. Ah, cool. Yeah. I'm Tommy Jarvis. Yeah. So nice. um, this article says New Mutants will be full-fledged horror movie. So I guess it's appropriate this article came out on Friday the 13th. Um, That's what I'm t- right. So this this is why I think this article was kind of interesting, guys. When we uh, initially saw the teaser for this movie, all of us had the same reaction. We were like, this looks like a totally different kind of X-Men movie, something we, we have never seen before, and it really looks like it's going to be like a scary movie. Um, and we were excited about that. Well, apparently, Fox, Marvel, the the powers that be, not only did they notice the reaction that people had to the trailer, but they also noticed how well it did in the movie theater this past year. And they well, just what did? Uh, you know, it. Yeah, yeah. What what movie are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, what is it? Um, and so what they decided to do was. Pull the movie back in for reshoots, which some people would think, oh, this could, this could be a bad sign. Maybe there were some issues. But, yeah, that, that's that's where my mind went immediately. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the story goes on to tell us that it's not. It's really not that there were any issues. It's just that they've decided to go full-fledged horror movie with this thing. And so all the reshoots were centered around fully embracing that tone for this movie. So... Hmm. It's been pushed back. You know, the re- the release date was initially supposed to be 2018. Now it looks like it's probably going to be late 2019. But actually, wow. I'll be honest, I'm okay with it um, because I really do want it to go in that direction. And, I mean, we've kind of talked a little bit about how we we definitely need variety in our superhero superhero movies because we are awash with them nowadays. And if, if it's not something different every time we go, why, why do we need to go? Um and this is really going to be kind of new ground, new territory, and it's exciting um, to for me, I think, um, to see it go that way. 
Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, I mean, we are inundated with uh, superhero movies. Obviously, we're on the precipice of a very big one coming out in, in uh, Marvel's Infinity War. So, yeah, if, if they want to go and differentiate themselves and make themselves stand out from, you know, the sea of every other superhero movie, I'm absolutely for it. And and if they went back to do these reshoots, you know, to take the time to do that, go for it. Yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I'm down for it. I'm ready to see something just, you know, a new turn with with superheroes. So. I mean, we've seen X Men, we've seen the formula for Marvel, but this is something new. This is something I'm excited about. So, well, and it does seem like here recently with the superhero movies, uh, particularly in Marvel, uh, they have tried to start doing some new things to make it feel, you know, different from every mm-hmm. other Marvel movie that preceded it. And I mean, like, I, I guess you could uh, say it started with Ant Man and the original Guardians of the Galaxy, but then when you look at movies like Black Panther and especially Thor Ragnarok, I mean, they're just like trying stuff now and. So far, it's working. So, I like I said earlier, if they can make it stand out and feel different from the bazillion other movies we're getting, go for it. Yeah, and Charlie Heaton, who you may know from a little show called Stranger Things, is Never one, heard of, one of the stars of this movie. He did an, inter- an interview with EW, and um, and he said that that's the reshoots are, are going to do exactly that, that dif- differentiate it. Here's a here's a quote that they put into this article. It's basically about these mutants in a facility for damaged mutants. It's a story about these characters coming to grips with who they are, and it's a horror X-Men movie, which we haven't seen before. I feel like for an X-Men movie, yeah, I think they're going full-fledged horror. Without saying too much, I really don't want to give away too much what it's about. It's very under wraps, but it is, in terms of anything we've seen in the X-Men world, it's definitely a horror movie. It's scarier than anything we've seen in that genre. So... I, I mean, obviously, I'm not on the shoot, but I do want to say one thing. Has he seen X Men Three? That thing was straight up terrifying. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I probably shivered and cried in my bed for a whole day <laughs> over that movie. I mean, it was so bad they had to retroactively remove it from continuity. That's true. Yeah, it had to be wiped from existence. <laughs> yeah. Well, all that being said, uh, that may have been unintentional horror, and this in this case, they're going for intentional. Um, <laughs> The the only thing disappointing, aside from the release date getting pushed back, like we said, that I've seen uh, so far for the news for this movie that's come out is that uh, John Hamm was almost Mister Sinister, and he was going to be he was going to be in a post credit scene for this movie, and that got canned for whatever reason. And oh. that would have been I just that's that would be perfect casting in my opinion. Seriously, like like when you said John Hamm is Mister Sinister, it's like perfect casting i could totally see him being just the perfect sinister oh that's a bummer that that's not gonna happen yeah it may still happen they just didn't want to show their cards right then that is true possible they're trying to throw us off the trail maybe it's a swerve yeah so all right wouldn't it be go ahead oh well go ahead i was gonna say wouldn't it be great if like all the x-men movies didn't have stingers they just went anti-stinger yeah, like everybody's kinda... just sitting in the room. It's like, oh, you know, Disney just bought this property. I th- I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. End of credits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they could do that. Just to... after, yeah, after they trained us for 18 movies to sit like good boys and girls till the yep. lights come on, it's like, nope, suckers, got you. Oh, we've talked <laughs> about it before. It's not just Marvel movies now. I feel like every movie I go to, people aren't sure if they should get up when the credits come on. And and they kind of I don't know yeah they they look around at everybody else and kind of see what the general audience is doing and you see people maybe check their phones is there a post credit scene on mother <laughs> like <I don't> know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, well I mean when when all these Marvel uh, movies are out there making literally all the money in the world I don't blame Hollywood for trying to you know copy their success but I don't think the reason Marvel movies are successful is just because they have post credit no, scenes it's not it's not. But we've just we're being trained by these awesome movies to to stick around and want more. I think it's a I think it was an awesome thing that they've done because a lot I think people should stay. I I'm not gonna say I stay for the credits all the time, but I feel like you should stay for credits and you know, take a look. Look at the names of the people who put all the work into the, the film that you just watched. Unless it's a hey. stinker and then maybe you should just leave. Grip number two needs as much appreciation as, you know, uh, Mr. Ron Reynolds' handler. Sure, Come on. of course. Hey, well, well, you know what? I'm going to go out there and say an unpopular opinion. Screw the best boy. The best boy, he does not deserve that credit. <laughs> That's not nice. Screw him. What makes him the best? It's true. You know, my mom always told me I was the best boy. So. Mm-hmm. 
Some somebody somebody is being lied to. One of you is, yes. <laughs> I blame liberal Hollywood. <laughs> liberal Hollywood. Well, I'm gonna parlay the Charlie Heaton talk into some Stranger <laughs> Stranger Things talk. Um so Stranger Things season three, we got some news just in this last week that Carrie Ellis and Jake Busey are signed up to be in season three of Stranger Things. So adding to the you know the popularity, uh, and, well, I would say you know they brought in some strong players for season two. It looks like they're going to do it again uh, for season Justice three. For Bob, yeah. So um, I'm excited. I like about both that. of those. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Good casting um, on on both parts. That's that's good news. I, I'll be super interested to see what and who these people are because there's some strong actors. Yeah. I, uh, I believe uh, Busey is going to be playing a journalist for uh, the paper there in the town. And if I remember correctly, no. uh, uh, Carrie is going to be the mayor of said town. So yes. <laughs> yeah, based on uh, that's pretty good. Based on this Collider article, it looks like you are absolutely correct. So, uh, yeah, Carrie is yeah. going to be playing Mayor Klein. And then Jake Busey is going to be a journalist with the Hawkins Post named Bruce. <laughs> Bruce. He looks like a Bruce. Yeah, and for those I of you, what kind of character? Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure. I mean, uh, those of you who may not be familiar, Jake Busey, you would have seen him in such amazing classic films as Starship Troopers <laughs> or Frighteners. Yeah. yeah, he was in Frighteners. That's right. He was yeah. the bad guy, man. I, that that's the role I love him for. But I mean, <laughs> but you uninitiated can go with Starship Troopers. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, and Carrie, I Elwes. gotta be honest. I was a little disappointed uh, when I, I originally heard the story. I just heard uh, Princess Bride actor is going to be in Stranger Things, and I was disappointed to find out it wasn't Wallace Shawn, aka the inconceivable. Guy. I was gonna say it was inconceivable. He wasn't picked, right? Ah, look what he did. I, I was hoping he's dead. I was. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And I, I was gonna say I was. I was hoping it was gonna be Andre the Giant, but again. Uh, that that that'd have to be like a seance situation. So, uh, according to his uh, IMDb page, uh, Wallace Shawn alive and kicking. Okay, well maybe we. <laughs> I, I mean, we've put it out there before that that people have been dead, and, and I'm going to be really pissed yet. if by the time this episode drops, Wallace Shawn is dead. I'm going to hold you personally responsible for that. Me? Yeah. Yes. Well, the only reason I thought he was is because somebody said the. I don't know. Maybe they, they said a different character, but he was Zek on uh, Deep Space Nine. He played the Grand Nagus, if you guys watch Star Trek. Nerd. He was a pretty good Ferengi. Uh, <laughs> and somebody said the late Zek, and I was like, oh, I guess he died. I, well, I could have sworn he did, too, but maybe that was one of those rumors that swirled, Mandela effect. swirled around. Like, it's true. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah it right. happened in the, in the Berenstein Bears universe. We're in the Berenstein, Berenstein Bears. Bears. There it is, yeah. I, f- I forgot our universes collided. Okay. Well, <laughs> welcome back to the land of living. Is Andre the Giant alive too? Uh, according to IMDb, he is still dead, unfortunately. But <laughs> thought... he did have a really great documentary drop recently on HBO. So, you know, he has that going for him. Not nearly as nice as being alive, but, you know, it's better than not having a documentary on HBO that was well received. That's true. <laughs> I thought maybe you were going to tell me he got reincarnated as the Cash Me Outside girl. Oh God! Who apparently is starting a rap career, but anyway. Yeah, it like. Ugh. <laughs> Let's not just, give her just, any more just time. Just move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm way too sober to talk about the cash me outside girl. I want to keep it in Hawkins for just a second. This is something that uh, theme park fans can get excited about because the announcement came out as well that Stranger Things is coming to Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios. So. I, I feel like that's a haunted house that I might have the stomach for. A lot of these haunted houses that they that they build and these experiences that they do for Halloween Horror Nights. Look, I'm a chicken. I don't know if I'd go through some of those houses. <laughs> you know, yep. they do like an American Horror Story house. They're going to have a Shining house. I, th- that might be a little too much for me, but I can, do, I can do a Stranger Things haunted house, I think. Sure, it'd be freaky, but I'd be excited. Better wear your dust mask. Yeah, yeah exactly. seriously. Yeah, <laughs> be sure and take your legger before you go in there because your allergies are going to go crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, and keep your mouth covered at all times. It'd be a little slug jump in there. <laughs> yeah, I I do agree with you though. It's like I hear super great things about what they've done with the Halloween Horror Nights, but I am just like you. I'm a chicken. I'll cry. <laughs> I'll pee myself. I'll I'll probably like try and swing at something and then get thrown out and arrested. 
but but I do feel like I could possibly go through the uh, Stranger Things uh, and actually know, how actually enjoy it and not just be crying the whole time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Not, I uh, would not go having to have my girlfriend every day. Me out. <laughs> I would go every day if I live closer. I mean, it looks like an awesome every experience. Day. It really does. I, they maybe as we get closer to the Halloween season, we can talk a little bit more about what you know Universal does because it actually they they start Halloween Horror Nights in September. And maybe we can talk a little bit more about it then. But but man, they they transform that whole park. They've got people running up and down the streets. They do. I've seen a video where they have like a, a whole like purge area, and they've got the per- people walking around in masks with weapons, and they've got somebody up on a bus like yelling announcements about the coming purge. And God, I just the whole time I would be anxious and tight and nervous. Like the whole time that I was there, and I don't know that that sounds like a good time to me, but I you know. I do it once. <laughs> mm. I, 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 I live on adrenaline. I, I, I'll be all about that. <laughs> Scream at me. Tell me how much you're going to kill me. Let's do this. You have fun. I'm going to be hiding under Woody Woodpecker crying like a girl. <laughs> uh, well, you know, the Walking Dead uh, attraction became a permanent yeah, fixture. That's right. Mm-hmm. So then you can, you can go get your thrills and spills any time of year. I'll tell you, if you want to watch something hilarious, watch the videos of Kevin Hart and Jimmy Fallon going through some of those haunted houses. I feel <laughs> I watched like some of that. It's pretty good. I feel like I would be Jimmy Fallon in those situations. <laughs> yeah. Just a bunch of high pitched screaming. Yeah. Kevin Hart looks like he's ready to knock somebody out. But he's, oh, yeah. he's just a Before scared. he even goes in. Yeah. Before he even goes in, he's talking about, ah, I don't know if I can handle it. He's already See? psyching himself mm-hmm. out. When when I said I would take swings at stuff, that would be me. I would be on edge before I even went in the park. Like like I would I would be walking around with my hands up like I'm gonna karate fight. <laughs> Which as we all know, my fat ass is a great karate fighter. <laughs> oh, you're nimble. Don't mm-hmm. let nobody lie to you. You are nimble. Yeah, I have athletic or I have hidden athletic talent, so you know. Especially with especially with when frightened. Oh hell yeah. Uh, Adrenaline uh is a hell of a drug. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say I don't know why Kevin Hart was so mad. It's not like anybody's gonna see him. I mean, he's been going <laughs> under every bit of every bit of attraction. He's, Maybe yeah. that's why he was scared. He was he was afraid he was gonna oh, get stepped step on. Down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I ass- mean, I get that. The assault on Kevin Hart continues. <laughs> we're gonna keep going until he notices us. So we're just you gonna know keep beyond going until we all die. <laughs> Yeah, until and, and, and until it's more than just a cease and desist letter. Mm-hmm. We're gonna keep going until podcasts jump the shark. Though it, Zach Braff is starring in a new television show about how he quote owns a podcasting network. So I feel like we're on the verge of podcasts jumping the shark. Oh, where you at, Zach Braff? Give us a call, man. We're ready to right. sell out at any time. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. that's why I'm here to get over and sell out. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> We're all looking for that leg up on uh, giving away our souls. <laughs> Why do you think I encourage us to name drop the brands of drinks that we're drinking every time? In the hopes that it'll leak out and somebody's going to hear it and be like, yeah, we'll throw them a few dollars for saying our name. <laughs> or a case of beer. Either way. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I'd settle for either. Either way. I can be bought with commodities. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, I need to roll again. I got, I got a two. So we're going, uh, we're going gold, apple. gold apple, yeah, gold apple. Yep. These Ooh. cans, these are like soft top cans. They don't crack as well as some of the others. They had a throaty pop though. They had a throaty pop. Ooh, this one's like tart and sour. I like this one. I like a good one of my favorite, uh, like hard apple ciders is like green apple cider. I really like the sour. And this one's I don't got. I don't know if I've ever had a green apple cider. This one's got it. What's the name of the one that's got the angry angry orchard? <laughs> wow. <laughs> What's the one that's like angry yeah. and there's like a, a lot of trees like an orchard? <laughs> exactly. It got me there. Cool um, light. The the angry orchard green apple is is tasty. And uh at Matt's housewarming party, we actually took angry oh, no. orchard green apple and we brought uh fireball and we made a drink when you mix those two together that you call angry balls. And um, the results were beautiful. The results were Matt ended up at your house at 3 a.m. And he doesn't remember how he got there. (laughs) That's true. True story. (laughs) My wife had to come. One hell of a housewarming party. Oh, I don't even, I didn't even notice it got dark. Like at one point I was like, where did the sun go? (laughs) It's weird how it disappears every day. (laughs) I was like, 
Is it dark? Yeah. That was a good well, time. It's kind of like uh, that one time you came over, Jay, to watch uh, Tennessee, Georgia football. And I was like, hey, we got some orange shandy and I'm pouring orange vodka into it. <laughs> <laughs> Though, in my defense, it was the Derek Dooley year. So, I mean, that right there oh, is, is, is enough to drive Were any of y'all sober? Fan. No, no. <laughs> we, to be a Vol football fan during those years, it, it came with like it came with a case of beer. Like it, you, <laughs> you showed up at the door and they were like, oh, you're a Vol fan? Here, have your hard liquor. Guys. I'd like to call your attention to Steven Spielberg because it was announced this okay. this week that he will be tackling, in the words of this article, the DC Comics movie for an, a hero by the name of Blackhawk. And this is interesting to me because, first of all, Steven Spielberg hasn't done any kind of superhero movie, so it's first jump in it's his first jump into that ring. But also to pick a character who. And I didn't really know that much about Black Hawk until I heard about this, but it's so based in the like the '40s and '50s, um, it kind of lands <clears> right <throat> in his wheelhouse of those like I, I'm thinking like Indiana Jones style kind of movies, um, World War II uh, kind of things. So kind of interesting. Had you heard it? I'll, I'll ask you guys. Had you heard of Black Hawk or before this news came out? Uh, he might have shown up in like one episode of Justice League Unlimited or something like that. But if I had heard of Black Hawk, it was very passing. Like I'm, I'm looking up this article as you're talking, and it's like, I think I vaguely remember seeing maybe the logo he has on his chest, like his sign or whatever. But like I have not read a Black Hawk comic at all. What about you? Matt? I know there was a movie where he went down. <laughs> different? No, that's, no, that's different Black Hawk. Oh, 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 okay. This is this is one word. And, 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 you know, a guy. <laughs> oh. Well, that makes more sense than what I was watching. I was like, where is this guy? So. <laughs> well, I but was... yeah, the, uh, it, it is interesting that that's, that's where Spielberg is going to dip his toes into the whole superhero uh, genre. Because, I mean, like you said, he's done pretty much every other type of movie under the sun from, you know, drama to suspense to straight up action. So here he's trying the superhero stuff. And I mean, heck, most recently, Ready Player One. Some would say that was that was a yeah. big swing for Spielberg. So it's kind of interesting that he's that he's trying uh, some different stuff out at this point. Yeah. And while we may not be that familiar familiar with Blackhawk in the 40s, he was quite popular um, on his at Steven least Spielberg. Unless. Well, no, Blackhawk. And, oh, okay. I was going to say, dang, Spielberg looks good for his <laughs> Yeah, right? He, he is eternal. Um, <laughs> unless Blackhawk wrote his own Wikipedia page, this is coming from the Blackhawk <laughs> page, it says, at the height of his popularity in the early 40s, Blackhawk titles routinely outsold every other comic book except for Superman. Exactly. Blackhawk wow. Black Hawk also shares the unique distinction of being one of just four comic book characters to be published continuously in his own title from the 40s through the 60s. And the other the others are Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. So there was a radio series, which doesn't surprise me because people like to sit around the radios and be entertained back in those days because they were losers. And uh, hey, 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 let's not bag on people who enjoy <laughs> sitting around listening to the radio because I personally love them. And and he had a novel as well. And then it says that there was a film serial. Yeah. But well, looking uh, at some of the art, especially from the from the 40s and I, I assume the, uh, maybe the 50s, I really like the art style. It reminds me a lot of uh, I don't know if you all have read uh, Darwin Cook um, or uh, have seen any of Darwin Cook's um, stuff. Uh, it looks very similar to that. He did DC's New Frontier, and that has a very distinct art style that, that still just pops and looks timeless. So I'm I might have to go back and check out uh, some old Blackhawk stuff. That's right. I wonder if you can get it on, like, the DC app. I'm sure you can. I don't know. Sure. I, I, I just had to recently cancel my Marvel Unlimited uh, subscription because uh, that uh, money is tight. So if you have money, listeners, please send it to me. <laughs> send now. Yes. <laughs> Press one to send landed money. Um, hey, ah, that's I, what I'm I was looking for. I'm pretty sure after, after uh, the latest uh, iOS update, uh, you can now pay your favorite podcaster. So please be sure to do that. Mm -hmm. Straight, uh, except cash. Exactly. Or beer, as we previously yeah, established. Beer. Oh, absolutely. Commodities. Uh, beef jerky, whatever you got. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have beef jerky. Yeah. Okay, you can just... beer, beef jerky, then money. <laughs> yeah. That's Wait that's the, that's the hierarchy, or the, the pyramid of... of... Sadness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, 
No, when, the more I read about this guy, I just keep thinking of the same movie, and I had to look up the exact title, but you guys remember it, and this movie is 2004, so it's not that old, but it's pretty old. Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. Yep, I know that movie. That's the first thing I thought of when I read what this character is. Mm-hmm. Well, And, and uh, it's funny you went with that, because originally when Jay was describing it, I was, especially with the time period, I was thinking more of like a rocketeer type thing. Same, yeah, same kind of feel. Yeah. Yeah, and my question was, as I was kind of reading about him, I don't see that it calls out any particular superpowers that Black Hawk has. Is he just, is it kind of like a Fast and Furious situation, like his superpower is flying a plane or something? It could be. I mean, because I don't think that movie's called Top Gun. Oh, yeah, you're right. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, it it really does just look like it's it's a fleet of... uh, of planes and like maybe bombers or something and they and they all kick ass or something. It does say in 2011 as part of the new 52 um the Black Hawks were an elite covert military unit. So hmm. I, I guess it, it's just like super soldier kind of things in that in that <gasps> time. Dolph Lundgren. Or, or or maybe if you're a DC comic like old school uh, historians like Sergeant Rock and the Easy Company or something like that, very World War esque type, you know, do, boots on uh, boots on the ground, gun guns blazing battles. Yeah. Do you think he would modernize it, or do you think he's trying to capture? He's going to capture that '40s feel. I mean, he could try and modernize it, but I'd be or I'll be honest, I would be kind of uh, kind of bummed out if he did modernize it because mm-hmm. that would be part of the draw for me is you know that period piece yeah. set in the four or not really a period piece but set in that period and like Jay said it's like I mean just t- just think about what all Spielberg has done from the indie movies not the indie independent movies the <laughs> Indiana Jones movies uh Saving Private Ryan like yeah. he knows how to do that time period so I like I would be very interested to see more superhero stuff in that era because I mean we got we got it with the first Captain America movie we got it in Wonder Woman so I mean obviously it can work and especially with the with a film savant like like uh, Spielberg at the helm I think that could be really fun It'd actually be kind of interesting if he chose to do it in the, you know, the old school time period, because I wonder if they would even like maybe attempt to do some references to like Superman or Wonder Woman or something Hmm. in in that time. Tied in? Yeah, that'd be kind of, it'd be kind of neat. I'm not saying, you know. I almost wouldn't. (laughs) I I don't want it to be a crossover, but just some sort of a reference that that they exist in the same world, I guess is what I'm saying. You don't want to do that with the fanboys, though. I mean, I hate to be that. I mean, I am one on certain levels of certain things, but man, it'd be, oh my god. Yeah, I I don't know. Black Black girls tied together. Especially if it's just like a throwaway line, like, yeah, did you you hear what the Amazon did on the uh, the front in in Europe or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, like, I'd be okay with that. Don't, Don't, like, name drop. Yeah, no, no, I, I don't think it would be like you know Gal Gadot shows up to to be in Black Hawk, but I think it would be something similar to uh in in Winter or in Winter Soldier when uh, Shield is being infiltrated by Hydra, they just make that offhanded comment, be like Thor's off, or we don't know where Thor is, and uh, and Stark's in uh, Iraq, so so he's out yeah. of play. Yeah, I'd like that. That's what I'm or, looking for. Or he's in his jet, and you see him like swerve at the last minute. He's like, stupid flyboy. <laughs> or better yet, he crashes into Wonder Woman's invisible jet. <laughs> That's how you tie them all together. I like. Or that. you just see her in the background. You just see a form just out. Yeah, yeah. You, you see Gal Gadot just sitting on air, going very fast. Like, what? <laughs> it's like, oh crap! The movie hasn't rendered yet. My bad, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm still upgrading. You don't get to see it till I'm done. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I just rolled a one, which means rose apple. So, so you're normally, not when you, that. <laughs> normally when you roll a one, that's a critical failure. But you get a beer, so I don't think it's that critical of a failure. I no, hope it's not a critical failure. Not on checks. You don't get a you – know, it's not a critical failure on checks. All right. Well, uh, I'm, somebody roll a dice for me because I'm about to open my other oh. devil's service. All right. I'm going to roll my percentile dice. Let's see what you get. A 54. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but you got a 54. Uh, I didn't get wet, so that's good. good. <laughs> the, I did. By the way, oh, hey, oh, <laughs> hello. I was waiting for somebody to make it. I was waiting for I somebody. Firing. What? What's wrong with you? Well, guys? hello. <laughs> oh my! A little condensation on here, and you guys are dirty. The rose apple kind of tastes like armpit. 
Okay, so maybe you did critically fail when you I wrote think, that one. I think Start I did. Start with the fact that you know what armpit tastes like. It's, it smells like what it tastes like. <laughs> it's called college. We've, we've all been there. Who hasn't licked an armpit here and there? I mean, you, I mean, you had to get money for laundry one way or another, and you certainly weren't, weren't going to sell your body for sex, dot, 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 at that point. <laughs> I wasn't that Body deep. shots to pay the bills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody was paying. That was the problem. <laughs> yes, while we're at it, I would like to offer up my body for sex. <laughs> starting price, $50,000. <laughs> you know, it's one thing to get pinged for copyright infringement. It's another thing to get pinged for prostitution. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not being a prostitute. I'm just offering my body. There's a difference. For like experimentation. I, sure. <laughs> one kind of experimentation. <laughs> is what like. I'll say whatever I have to to not get arrested. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on before we get ourselves in too much trouble. Um, this was something that just popped up on our Twitter feed tonight, and I really wanted to end with this because I think this is really interesting. Apparently, according to Gizmodo.com, and they're referring to a Los Angeles Times article, Netflix is exploring the option of buying into the movie theater business. And so, according to the article, anonymous sources told the paper that the Los Gatos-based entertainment giant pursued a deal to buy the Mark Cuban-owned Landmark Theaters, but ultimately backed out due to the high sale price. And so this article kind of goes on to talk about why they might be interested. And one of, one of the things that they talk about is, since Netflix original films don't play in theaters, they are not eligible for things like the Oscars. Or to go to... Oh, they're, also, yeah. <laughs> they're also not eligible to be part of like film festivals and things like that. That makes more sense. Yes, that explains... Because originally it's like, doesn't that kind of defeat Netflix's business model? But, I mean, I hadn't even thought that does disqualify them from all those awards and, you know, all the notoriety and exactly. money. What's missing, out, missing out on that. And apparently, next, Netflix has pushed for a long time on filmmakers to... When movies get released in theaters, they'd love to have, like, a streaming release line up with a film release. And you say... Well, that doesn't really make a lot of sense because wouldn't they be missing out on a lot of cash if they did that? But um, I think it's a good point to say people are still going to go to the theaters to see movies. I mean, it, it you would, it's not going to be every movie because I'll tell you this. Let, let's say Super Troopers 2, it's coming out tomorrow. If it was streaming tomorrow on Netflix, I'd be watching it on Netflix. I'm probably not going to go to the theater to see it. But... Yeah. Well, and especially with it dropping on 420, I'm sure you wouldn't be the only one that would prefer to watch it from home. Right. But if we're talking about a film like um, ha- like Solo, I'm going to the theater. I want, I want that experience. And we've kind of talked about why we would do that before. So I think that's part of it. But the other thing that I would say is that, and, and the article goes on to talk more about this too, Netflix would have an opportunity to offer ticket discounts or maybe food discounts or or incentives for subscribers to come out to the theaters and see the films that are going to be streaming on Netflix as well. The other thing that they could do is offer like um like binge sessions for for like things like Stranger Things. Oh good lord. Stranger Things better hose them seats out. Yeah. Well, that's true, but you know, like think about the possibility of them saying, "Hey, if you're a subscriber, Come out. We're gonna be. We're gonna show Stranger Things like uh, season one, end to end. Um, and if you want to come out and enjoy that, come do that. People are gonna. You're gonna have to buy food and drinks while you're there. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they uh, movie theaters have been doing that for you know the Marvel movies leading up to Avengers. They did it uh, leading up to uh, Age of Ultron. DC's done it for Justice League. So I mean, like that would be a really good way to a make money for Netflix and also for the theater. Cause like you pointed out, if you're going to be at a movie theater for 13 hours, you're eventually going to have to eat and drink. <laughs> One would think. Mm-hmm. That oh yeah. Your, I mean, yeah. but a lot of those festivals will let you come in and out too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I, uh, when, when I did the uh, lead up to the first Avengers, they gave you like a wristband. So if you wanted to, you know, go next door to like the taco place and get something to eat, you could, and then walk back in and you know, no hassle. Yeah. yeah. So while it kind of sounds like like a nutty thing to do because the theater industry has been suffering for a long time. I mean, you know, it, we we see them doing all kinds of things to try to, 
make their business more profitable. Why would Netflix want to get in that when it seems like they have a good thing going? Well, I think there's a lot of reasons for them to do it. And this is kind of maybe the opportunity that we've been talking about for someone to come in and disrupt that movie theater market because something has to happen. Um, I, I really think that the way things are now, unless that business model changes, at some point, either tickets are going to be too expensive for, for me to take my family or theaters are going to start closing. I mean, what what else is going to happen? Uh, movie I'd, theaters can start changing up the way they present the movies. Uh, the yeah, theater I was about closest, to say technology. Yeah, the theater closest to me, I mean, uh, they have full, you know, reclining seats, leather, leather giant, just comfortable ass chairs that you can sit down in. So, uh, and I know uh, back in y'all's neck of the woods, back in Knoxville, uh, Regal Cinema is opening kind of like a bar type feel, yeah, cinema, you know, bar. a movie yeah. kind of Mo- movie but, tavern, Alamo Draft House. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, going Hall. after what a- Alamo Draft House is doing. So, so I feel like that is how theaters will compete and try and stay relevant as as more and more people would rather just you know sit at home and watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, something has to happen. That's all I'm saying. It can't. It can't. What? It can't stay as it is for sure. I mean, I've said it for years that the 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 way home technology for viewing movies like TVs and sound systems and you know the ergonomics of of chairs and you know the furniture and everything. I mean, they've got to step up because we we've all we probably said it in numerous episodes you know the budget it would take for you to be comfortable to watch a movie and be happy is very low mm-hmm. i figured it out i, I they're they're going to introduce hookers that's what movie theaters are going to do you watch a movie and you get a hooker because it's the oldest profession for a reason Duh. very true very true <laughs> <laughs> it all goes back to prostitution i would be okay with free candy but we can work the details out. <laughs> Ooh, free candy or hookers? Well, what type of candy is it? That's the What's question. Your favorite? Ooh, wow. <laughs> That's in Sour Patch Kids. Oh, nice. I love mm-hmm. They're going to shoot kids. it out a gun at you at the front of the theater. Maybe oh my god! A... If they have a Sour Patch Kids cannon, that would be awesome. <laughs> Speaking of, also uh, I, I I started a new job recently, and I found out they own a hot dog cannon, and it's exactly what it sounds yes! like. Yes. <laughs> what is the pressure it comes out of, and do you think you can shoot one in the air and catch it in your mouth? Uh, the pressure it shot out as is delicious. <laughs> it's set to delicious. Do you what get a to, time to be alive? Do you get to fire the hot dog cannon? No, no, I'm I'm not that high up in the uh, in the pecking order yet. <laughs> oh, How do you man. get there? What promotions do you need? I've already need- turned in my resume. <laughs> I've told them I'm a giant wiener. Imagine being able to put something like that on a future resume. Knows how to operate a hot dog cannon. Hey, well, uh, I can li- or I on on my resume it says that I have a uh, ran sound for a talking bird before. So you know, <laughs> it's amazing what you do uh, for a job. Oh, that qualifies you for um, nothing. Yeah, that that didn't even qualify me for unemployment anymore. <laughs> wow. So uh, yes, yes. Once again, send money. Send money. <laughs> So Netflix, if you're listening and you do invest in theaters, please make sure the the stewards, the 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 uh, you know, the, what you know, the Patrick stewards, yeah, the any 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 of your uh, movie theater employees are trained and can operate a hot dog cannon because that'll bring people in. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I would so be into that. See, like, like if you thought people lost their minds whenever a T-shirt cannon came out, it will be mass hysteria <laughs> if people knew there was a hot dog cannon and they could possibly have a dog oh, shot at them. I got it. I got it. So, <laughs> Such a new technology for theaters. The world. Hot dog cannons. That's got to happen. <laughs> yeah. But I'm thinking, man, I'm going to get awful thirsty in this seat. So, what do you have? A tap in your seat. You know, you pay for that ticket, but you pay for as much as you can get out of that tap. Just saying. Mother of it's going to be cheap beer. Don't expect anything expensive. And does an oxygen mask drop down? No. A funnel pops up <laughs> and has equipment for both gender to <laughs> empty out. <laughs> okay, so now it's getting up. a little bit weird. Oh, it's not weird. Crap. It's not weird. <laughs> your, your eyes should be on the screen, number one. 
So don't worry well, about it. Especially, especially if you're taking a number one. I think you would want to take your eyes off the screen. No, no, no. No number twos in this theater, I was buddy. about to you say. You got to get up for that. <laughs> what, what if somebody ate Taco Bell before they came to the theater and they're about to they blow it up? They don't come to up. the theater. <laughs> you know what? Let's, let's do a little want, TSA I don't at the people. door. I and we're going to examine bowels. Oh, buddy, you are full. You got it. Can't come in here. <laughs> yeah, that'll put butts in seats. <laughs> well, it's better than scrubbing the butts off of the seat. Oh, man. That's a bit <laughs> intrusive. I don't, I don't man, think... It's no. not intrusive. You do body scans at the airport and you never question I it. I feel dirty every time. I don't. I, I don't. smile. They're looking at my naughty bits. I'm fine with it. I'm shy. Um... I, I really don't want to be watching a movie knowing that people around me are are peeing into funnels. Like I just I don't really want fine. that happening. Fine. fine. Look, we'll have what's called a shady booth on the back side of the <laughs> theater so you don't have to you don't have to miss what's going on. I think you just put a trough in the back row and you just <laughs> Yes. <laughs> just turn it into a into a restroom at every NFL stadium. Just nothing but a trough, to, so the animals can come pee in it. Was there guys? That, w- did you guys tell me about this, or was it someone else that was telling me that, like, there was bathrooms that the, that they had the theater had a lot of bathrooms or something like that to the fact of like when you went into the bathroom, the movie's still the audio's still playing in the bathroom. I haven't heard of that, but but that would be super awesome. I think I did hear that from somewhere. Somebody uh, told me that, and I want to say it was one of you guys. It, it, it wasn't me, and it doesn't sound like it was Landon, but I, I heard that as well from someone that, like, there was a theater they went to. You went to the bathroom, and, and, and maybe there were screens in the Still floor poor. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what it was. It, it had, like, full screens of the movie. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, if I can't get to the urinal with my movie, I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey okay. hey Hashtag hot dog, man. Hashtag one beer. <laughs> Hashtag catch up. <laughs> Kid. With the hot dog cannon. Oh, now I'm back. <laughs> Seriously, we live in a world where there is a weapon that will fire a hot dog at you. And then everything you else might be going wrong with ma- the world, but we have history. that. You know, you could solve, you could end wars and solve wor- world hunger at the same time. Yeah, um, and it would be awesome. Justin, you are like my muse. So what if you had a hot dog drone? <laughs> hot dog drone. <laughs> You're just dropping hot dogs on people. Poo, 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 poo. <laughs> you carpet bomb one row with hot dogs? That sounds like my freshman year in college. <laughs> oh, no. And good night, folks. <laughs> oh, my God. If we could only end the show with that. <laughs> you know you're talking about catchphrases before the show. That is your catchphrase, Justin. <laughs> that is your new catchphrase. <laughs> Sounds like my <laughs> freshman year of college. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> well, as it turns out, I don't have anything. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so I think I think that will be a good place to wrap it up for the day. Nice. That was uh that was that was uh that was pretty slick. Always end on a high note. Seriously, that's it. All right. <laughs> did, did did we miss anything? Um, uh, as of this podcast, uh, being out in the wild, uh, PlayStation Four has a new game that is getting a lot of very positive buzz. Forbes dot com is reporting that the new God of War game is the highest reviewed game since Breath of the Wild and uh, Nintendo, uh, or excuse me, Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey came out. Uh, and I looked on Metacritic before we started recording it. It's still holding steady at a 94, 95. Uh, it has way more perfect scores than any other score. So as a PlayStation 4 fan, I'm really looking forward to this game. And oh. it, it, like, it looks gorgeous. Like, I was talking to the girlfriend. I really wish I had a PlayStation Pro and a 4K TV just for this game. Yeah, the mania behind this game is insane. I've heard that, yeah, I've heard that it's good. Um, I've never really gotten into the God of War series, but the, my wife, my wife is a big God of War fan. <laughs> I was I was actually playing three uh, earlier today uh, to get excited for uh, the new God of War. So I'm, I'm very looking forward to um, the new game. It's been a while since uh, we've had a true God of War standalone game. We've had a couple spinoffs. Uh, they brought over some PSP versions and put it on the PlayStation Network and stuff like that, but 
for it to be an honest to god standalone god of war 4 and it looks like it's just changing everything it's moving away from the greek mythology into norris mythology mm. which i think is awesome mm-hmm. can't lose <laughs> Yeah, uh, sign me up. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's what I'm going to be doing after I get out of my screening of Super Troopers 2 tomorrow. Nice. Late Sounds birthday to me. Gods. Sounds like a good <laughs> night. Indeed. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is. It's getting a lot of high scores. Official release date, 420. That, that, you know, honestly, if you if you are a video game designer, it's brilliant to release your game <laughs> on 420. To be Especially oh, this yeah. year with it being on a Friday? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right, now now can we wrap it up, Dad? You're the dad. I was talking to you this time. You got mad at me, so. Oh uh, uh, well, well, uh, I was gonna point out we had a bunch of good trailers drop, but we can talk about that next time. Yeah, we're we're sitting at uh, close to the hour mark, so let's save it for next time. Um, trailer talk is always fun. I like to do it in chunks, and I and I'd like to see the ones that trailer talk. That sounds like a fun podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sorry. it would be starring Kid Rock, but uh, okay, oh. and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> but his name is Kid. Okay, I can't do it. Recently inducted to the WWE Hall of Fame. Ugh. Hey, Landon, are you <laughs> gonna do a near fall radio about the Superstar Shakeup 2018? Yes, uh, if you're a fan of the Sweet Science Professional Wrestling, uh, WWE reset the, I guess, stage after WrestleMania. They uh, shaked up some superstars, some uh, faces that were on SmackDown are now on Raw and vice versa, and we even got some NXT call-ups. I'm hoping to get a near-fall radio episode about uh, talking about that, the fallout of Mania, and the greatest Royal Rumble, which is coming a week from this Friday. It's a 50-man over-the-top battle royal broadcasting live from Saudi Arabia on the WWE Network. That's right. No women's matches, by nope, the way. No women. So yeah. the WWE, with their women's revolution, they're staying home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what else are you podcasting about lately? Uh, here recently, that's all I've been uh, podcasting on. Of course, I have the uh, Game of Thrones talk, a.k.a. Got Talk, which is a episode-by-episode breakdown of Season 7 of HBO's award-winning series Game of Thrones. That's uh, myself and Hunter East. That's posted exclusively at buttmunchchips.com. Buttmunchchips. Sit on your butt. I am munch. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Landoz, L-A-N-D-O-Z. That's where you'll find any exciting announcements and i say exciting with the biggest air quotes i can find uh if i have a new project drop uh that's where i'll make that official announcement speaking of it a new project this is something i have kind of in the hopper uh i've told my girlfriend forever that she needs to watch the wire and she is a big fan of the sexy drackler show um true blood so we have made a deal if she watches all five seasons of the wire i'm gonna sit down and watch all of true blood with her <laughs> oh, and, nice. me, and me being the uh the horror for content that i am i'm trying to convince her to join me on a uh, yeah. on a podcast to talk about that do it that would be great mm-hmm. i think so mm. so uh twitter.com Can you say Orlando's. wired on diaries We'll work on the on the title, <laughs> but I appreciate the effort. But uh, yeah, right. twitter.com slash Landos, that's where you can find the latest from me. And yes. uh, send me money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm broke! Yep. Matt? Uh, Tracking Track Podcast. You can catch up on Discovery and catch up on us. Talking about Discovery uh, at Tracking Track Pod. If you want to jump on Twitter and see... Some of the things we talk about, there are some new developments that have happened here recently that we are not talking about as of yet, but we will be. Um, so you can get caught up and know exactly what we're excited about coming up. Uh, the season two is a little ways off, so you got plenty of time, but don't drag your feet because you'll be lost about what we're talking about, and you don't want that FOMO on you. That's right. So Tracking Track Podcast at Tracking Track Pod. Yeah, FOMO is really hard to get out of your clothes. You definitely don't want that it on you. Stinks. It's sticky too. Ooh. It's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of th- projects in development, I have something I haven't even really talked to you guys about just yet. I am working on my very own spinoff podcast, and it's if you've noticed, you may have noticed. I, n- I know I talked with uh, one of our super fans, Jacques, at work. Uh, and he noticed that we haven't really covered a lot of theme park news lately. Um, and it's mostly because I feel like, I mean, sometimes you guys are excited about it, but mostly it's just me, and I don't want it to be like a one-sided thing, so I don't... <laughs> Screw you too, buddy. 
I try not to bring. I try not. If to I bring could, it. I'd live at Disney. So you can go well, to hell, Jim. Well, um, then you may want to be a guest on my upcoming podcast. Um, yet to be named, it will be Disney centric, and it's going to have a lot of Disney travel content. So. For those of you out there who might be interested in such a thing, you can tweet at me at the Croots or at Nerd News Cafe. Send me a message or something. Tell me some things you like to see. I've got a lot of ideas and doing a lot of brainstorming about what the what the show is going to be like. Um, the reason I've been messing around with uh, song creators is I've been working on what a original intro song for that show might sound like. So. I've got a bunch of things going on. I know I know. I want to talk a lot about the parks. I want to talk about travel advice. Uh, one piece that I've considered doing is maybe a standing trip report. If people let me know they've gone and they want to come on the show and talk about the trip, we might do that every single time. So um, I think that would be fun. And uh, make it interactive, make it make it fun, and just kind of celebrate all that all that is Disney on that show. So Well, cool. Yeah. So, so more to come, and of course, you guys are always welcome to join me if you would like, whenever you would like. Um, so I just, I just have to get out you on Twitter about that. That's right. Get at me. Okay, check your Twitter, and then, and then, uh, I will probably have a few special uh, standing co-hosts, and those people might be my wife and the kids. So, uh, well, neat. I look forward to uh, starting as a special guest on that podcast, and then slowly dominating the conversation <laughs> like I have on this podcast. <laughs> It's going to so be... for just a crit. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I was going to just I was gonna let uh, you do it vicariously through your podcast and going to places. Yep. <laughs> and not waiting in line. Yep. Well, I don't want to hear about your waiting in line stories, so I don't have those. <laughs> well, maybe we can help people not wait in as many lines. That that would be a nice go. goal to have. So. So, so anyway. are you telling me that uh, we're going to have a nerd news cafe trip to Disney because I'm on board? Hey, man, if we can call it like research and write it off as like a business expense, let's do it. <laughs> I'm down. Like, like the worst that can happen is we go to jail. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And there's always worse than that. I guess I don't know. Yeah, and I ain't afraid to go back. <laughs> so anyway, keep your eyes open. More to come on that. I'll probably launch the Twitter and maybe a website prior to launching the show um, because I would like to build first of all an audience, but also maybe start getting some interaction with people that will help feed into the content of the show before we ever start. So. Um, so keep your eyes up, and I will keep keep the Twitters updated, as it were. Did you check your Twitter? I did, and I got a weird DM from it's a it's a dick pic, is what it is. Okay, I didn't I didn't send you uh, <laughs> that in uh, in your DM. That I I posted mine on your time. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well be proud. Have you seen me? Of course you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought it was a shot of the. Hot dog can. It, damn it. <laughs> well, it does have many names: the Lanaconda, the Hot Dog Cannon, uh, uh, the whole effing show. Oh gosh! All back the, to the is hot it dog. It yet? No. Oh, I made myself oh. feel sad. Oh. <laughs> hashtag Hot Dog Cannon. That's the hashtag. <laughs> that's the hashtag. This show. Yep. yep. Hashtag Ghosty Obi. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks everybody for listening once again. Uh, we always have a blast doing the show. I hope you have a blast listening. Come back again. We will hit you with some new content next week. But until then, you can hit us up on Twitter. You can visit our Facebook fan page. You can go to our website, which is nerdnewscafe.com. You can email us at nerdnewscafe at gmail.com. And if we don't hear from you, too bad. You're going to hear from us in about seven days. Until then, see ya. Who wants a hot dog in transmission? <laughs> hot dogs. Armor hot dogs.